Welcome to another episode of United for a Healthy Stoughton, coming to you virtually um, from my living room and the O'Donnell Middle School. Uh, my name is Stephanie Patton, and I am the Prevention Coordinator for the Town of Stoughton, and today I have with me as a special guest, um, Mr. Matt Colantonio, who is the principal for the O'Donnell Middle School and also the MBDE, which is the Mass Partnership for Diversity in Education Rep for Stoughton Public Schools. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, Steph. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. So um, we are going to talk today about teacher um, and staff diversity at the Stoughton Public Schools. And it's been a conversation that um, I have an, a number of other um, groups that I've been in. People have been asking questions about this. And I knew that Mr. Colantonio is kind of an expert in this subject. So I'm very excited to have him with us today. Um, we also know from a prevention perspective that it's so important for um, young people to have a really positive um, experience in school, to feel connected to their schools. It actually has very important long-term impacts, positive health impacts for them. Um, and as we were talking about before the show, we actually know there's some research um, that Mr. Colantonio was talking about, about actually young people of color um, and how important it is for them to see um, teachers that look like themselves in school districts, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, the my work in this area started um, um, pretty intensely for me around 2016, 2017, um, that school year. Um, as part of a school council initiative, we were looking at ways, you know, we had a diverse student body. Stoughton is uh, blessed to have um, a diverse uh, student body. And we had a not diverse staff and faculty. Um, and so we were looking at ways um, to remedy that. We had done some cultural competence um, surveying of our students um, um, and of our teachers at the time. And so we had, I had started to look around and kind of um, research. My school council did the same thing. And we had found, um, you know, mountains of research um, that suggest um, that uh, students of color um, connect in a more meaningful way with their schools when they feel represented in some way um, on the faculty and staff. And so um, we knew that we had um, a, a problem there uh, in terms of having uh, a predominantly white uh, faculty and staff uh, and then a pretty diverse um, student body. So that kind of started um, um, my, my real work in the area. You know, you have, you're a building principal. I started here in 2012 and 2013. Um, and you sort of knew um, that it would, be, it would be better if your faculty um, looked a little bit more like your student body. I think most, um, you know, school leaders um, have that thought. And when, once we really started to look at that um, research, we, we started to find um, some challenging and kind of fascinating um, components of that work. Mm -hmm. Great. So I know that, um, you know, it's, this is a challenge, not just for Stoughton, actually, but for you know, school districts across the Commonwealth and across the country. So why is it such, um, you know, so challenging? Like, why why can't we just say like, great, we have some openings, we're gonna go out and we're just gonna hire a more diverse faculty? Yeah, um, so I've, I've been uh, the MPDE district rep since 2017. Um, and so MPD, the Massachusetts Partnership for Diversity and Education um, is a consortium of school districts. Um, and the goal of the organization is very simple. It's to recruit, um, hire and retain teachers of color. That's the only mission behind MPDE. And districts who join, and when I started, there were 20 districts in 2017. It's 2020, there are 30 districts um, now in 2020, and there's only not more than 30. Um, I could have said that better, but um, we ca they capped it at 30. So we they didn't want the um, organization to get too large. And so, you know, the reason why uh, so many districts are um, looking for the help of an organization like MPDE, and there's a, there's a sort of city-based organization a lot like it. I forget the acronym, but um, it's a Metro Boston, um, Greater Boston um, school districts um, with the same goal in mind. Is um, it is a national need, and so it's it's really um, from a hiring perspective, there's a lot of uh, probably social um, forces. Um, and some deep dive analysis that you could do on the reasons why these facts are the facts. But the facts are, um, especially in 2017, um, when I first joined, the facts are that in Massachusetts, 
there aren't a lot of college students of color majoring in education, finishing in education, and then looking for teaching jobs. So that at the heart of it, there is your dilemma. So mm -hmm. for the most part, districts, I think sometimes there's this idea that, that candidates of color get passed up a lot um, in districts um, for jobs, um, either subconsciously or unconsciously, or that's happening. Uh, in my experience, most districts are really looking to increase their staff diversity. Uh, they're joining groups like MPDE, um, and they're, they're really looking to diversify their staff because it's so much better for their um, diverse student bodies. Um, it you know, makes for a better staff. Um, and it's hard to find candidates. And then in MPDE, they really cultivate a pipeline of candidates, literally a, a statewide pipeline of candidates of color that um, district um, member districts have access to that other districts don't have access to. So they do a career fair, um, they do a building bridges forum, which is a pr pretty amazing forum. And they invite colleges that have um, education programs where there are um, candidates of color, um, uh, Leslie, um, UMass, um, Bridgewater State locally. Um, and so it's really looking for the for the candidates and trying to put your school system in front of those candidates and make a case for those candidates to come to you. So it's actually it's actually very competitive mm -hmm. uh, and can get really competitive. And um, it's really hard work. Um, uh, and, you know, as a suburban district, that needs to compete with uh, urban districts that are bigger and they they pay more. I mean, if you take a look at the Boston pay scale compared to the Stoughton pay scale, it's awfully hard to compete. They pay a lot more. Um, we have lots of, I've talked to lots of candidates over the years. Uh, when you're committed to this work, it's about building relationships with, you know, folks who are looking to become teachers or maybe they substituted for you or they were a para for you or um, kind of working the list and getting in touch with people and reaching out to people. Um, and so I've talked to a lot of people who are like, yeah, you you seem great, Mr. Colantonio, and Stoughton would be great, but I can't pass up the money that they're offering me in um, in a Boston or a bigger um, urban district. So, Right, right. And, and, and it's a national trend. It's you sort of nationally, um, not in every single state, and I certainly wouldn't want to speak for every single state. I don't, I don't really like to speak for uh, beyond my own school, yeah. but having been a member of MPD for for a while, it's, there's a national shortage of teachers of color, and it's it's not this certain community where um, um, students of color are becoming teachers of color. Um, and in Massachusetts, uh, there's a pretty statewide shortage. Some districts have been have done better than others, but it's uh it's a commitment. It's hard work. Um, yeah. Yep. So what are some of the, it's, you alluded to some of the strategies around, you know, having conversations with people who maybe are already in the district that are paras or um, are affiliated in some other way and, and you know, supporting them to get the additional maybe education that they might need to come back and teach in the district. Um, so talk a little bit about that or some of the other, you know, it sounds like this is a much longer term strategy. If, the, if there aren't folks in the pipeline, if there aren't people graduating from schools of education um, who are people of color, right, we need to go back another step right to think about right. how we, yep. how we increase that pool right yeah and so yeah i would say when i first joined you know we, it started as a, a school council initiative to increase com cultural confidence in general um, um at oms and um as a school council we sort of decided that we could put all these things in place and that would be great but we really needed to increase um our, our staff and teachers of color so that our, our um, staff looked a little bit more like a student body. At the time, um, I had two um, uh, non-white teachers on and, and staff in my entire school. So of, of roughly 100, it's actually 103 um, total staff members. Um, and so, you know, we sort of set out um, to do that. In the beginning, when I first joined, to be honest, I thought that I would, I, I lobbied the district um, I convinced them to join MPDE. I was very proud of that. I became the district rep. Um, I, so I said, I agreed that I would go to all the meetings and do all that work. I'm actually the only uh, building principal who's a district map, uh, rep out of the 30 districts. Uh, but I love it. I love to do it. It's great. I love, and they, they, they like to have a building principal on uh, the consortium. Um, I do a lot of hiring so I can kind of be helpful. There's a lot of uh, building administrators who come to the meetings um, but most districts have a human resource person who's the district um, rep and um, Stoughton's on the small side of the districts in there. But anyway, so honestly, um, 
Um, Steph, I thought I would, I thought I would join and become yep. the district rep and that would be it. I really thought it would be like, now you're a district rep and MPDE. I did a lot of research. MPDE was A, available for Stoughton as a district and B, was around since the 90s and had a really good reputation, the Massachusetts Partnership for Diversity and Education. So I thought I would just join and then it would be like, okay, let's hire. Yeah, let's do it. We get all these candidates and we can hire all these candidates and that would be great. And that's not exactly what happened. I do have to say that they were immediate. I want to give props to MPDE because they've been wonderful. There were immediate benefits that I recognized. There was a um, diversity career fair that they did every year at Cambridge Ridge and Latin High School um, for all of the um, local colleges that had um, graduating um, future teachers um, at their schools. You know, it was it was geared towards uh, uh, teachers of color, but you know anyone could kind of come, so that was good. I met some people, I hired some people, um, and and that was great. Um, and then the more you, you know, the more I stood on um, uh, as the as the member um, uh, for my district, the more I realized that the problem was um, tougher than that to solve, and that it took more um, long term thinking. So you know, over, since I've been a member um, or the district rep for MPDE, I've been very lucky through MPDE directly. I have definitely met candidates of color that I wouldn't have met otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably never would have heard of Stoughton or thought about Stoughton, um, but I go to the career fair every year. Um, Stoughton gets mentioned as a district, um, an MPDE district with all the MPDE mailings and emails and the forums that they do. So mm -hmm. I've definitely met hired and retained teachers of color that I would not have been able to without MPDE and that's great. But then as I've sort of evolved a little bit and you realize that, you know, it's a diverse community, Stoughton, and I'm meeting folks who are, um, uh, you know, folks of color who, you know, you meet them and you might do some work with them either on a volunteer basis, um, substitute teaching, paraprofessional, um, um, or, um, maybe with like United for a Healthy Stoughton or some of our Stoughton conversations work. You know, you right. never would know, we, or, or my former students, you know, I've been in Stoughton forever. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an old man, you know, I've been here since 2001. So my kids that I had in 2001, they are, you know, adults now. And, and, and so I meet them and I'm always like, you should teach. Why mm -hmm. have you ever thought about teaching? So there's a pipeline idea too, and, and sort of a, a long-term idea that goes into um, finding, recruiting, hiring, and reta retaining teachers of color for your school, that it's the harder work. It's, uh, you know, I, I think about, there's a gentleman, I won't say his name, but there's a gentleman who um, was in town for a little while um, and he was doing, he, he rented out um, one of the gyms uh, for some open uh, gym time for basketball. Um, and I ran into him and um, great guy, um, African-American gentleman did some substitute teaching for me. Um, and we got to talking, um, kind of connected and he, he wasn't certified to teach, but had thought about maybe teaching and had his bachelor's degree. And so I talked to him, like I talked to uh, that gentleman, like once a month, we check in with each other. Where are you? Have you passed an MTEL? Are you still thinking of teaching? Um, and you know, you couple that long-term relationship with an opening has to happen in my school at just the right, right. time. Right. And those things have to collide. But, you know, the more I do this work, the more I see that um, uh, that's what it takes to do this work. And I've gotten a little less fearful and shy. You know, as a white administrator, I used to be a, a little bit apprehensive about saying to my assistant principals and teachers who are on the initial interview committees, mm -hmm. um, like, hey, I want some candidates of color. You know, I, I uh, you know, people say, well, it was that reverse discrimination. And and I'm, I'm like, I'm not asking you to eliminate the best candidates. I'm just saying that if you have a candidate of color who would be good for our students of color here, we don't have a lot of those teachers. I want to see them. So don't eliminate them. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying we're going to overrule someone else who's who's better for the job. But I just want to see that person in a model lesson or a second interview. I was a little shyer. Mm -hmm more apprehensive about making that request. And I knew through MPDE that um, other districts, uh, Cambridge, um, Cambridge's, uh, Framingham's, 
there's other districts, you know, they have diversity, equity, and inclusion officers or assistant principals whose sole function is diversity, equity, inclusion. You know, they're, they're saying, you can't send me a candidate pool unless there's a candidate of color in there. You can't send me three finalists for a job unless there's a candidate of color in there. So I think it took me a little while um, to get real comfortable in my role there, just to be honest and to kind of give a, some full disclosure, yep. you know? Um, but I think that if you're committed to the work, um, it's, it's a big, you know, then there's a lot of other things I think for me that maybe I don't focus on as much as a, as a, you know, hiring or, you know, um, supervisory um, perspective um, to focus on that. But uh, a little while ago, I just, we just kind of decided here that it was like maybe the most important thing that we're going to do um, to give all our students sort of the same feeling of connection um, here in the building. Yep. That's great. And so I think, and I, I feel like I've heard you talk about this too, just around thinking about, so we have a really amazing, diverse, um, talented student body currently. Um, and we, we have for many years. And um, how do we, you know, encourage and support some of those young people now to think about teaching as a career path for them so that, you know, in a couple of years, you can, you know, be meeting them at some of these recruitment sessions and saying, hey, come back to Stoughton. So not only now are you... Yeah. Um, you know, a candidate of color, but um, also you have roots here. And, um, and and I know that, you know, I think some of our most amazing teachers are folks who grew up in Stoughton and came back. And, you know, we have lots of folks in the district who have had that experience. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So some of the, some of the ideas around that, that's real long-term work, right? Yeah. That's you're, putting, you're planting the seed in like 10th grade yep. and, and kind of waiting for that to flower. Um, when a student um, becomes a young adult and turns 22 or 23, but um, and I've always I've I have had the good fortune to have had many former Stoughton students come back and teach. Mm -hmm. So any um, race, color, um, or back, you know, that is just a good story. It's just good. It's good for the for the for the school community to know. I went here, I had a good experience, and I came back. And yeah. so for the most part, it's not our students of color. We have wonderful diversity in our student body, amazing kids that graduate every year when we send them off. And so I think for us, it's about being frank with, with, mm -hmm. with saying what that's a need here in Stoughton and why that's a need. Yeah. Um, and there are, it, it's, there are groups at the high school that I think this, this discussion comes up. I think of the Fruition Scholars um, group at the high school um, where I think this topic um, kind of comes up, but I think it's also about um, reaching out to your students of color um, at the high school who maybe maybe they're not thinking about teaching in the moment. You know, so many high school kids um, in middle school too. You know, I mean, if you I'm I'm a high school I'm a middle school principal right now. Yep. If you told me in eighth grade that I was going to be a middle school principal, I would have thought, thought I would have laughed at you. Right. I, that, was, that was the last thing. I can't believe I ended up as this, but I love it. I love every day of it. But I think it's about planting that seed and telling our students of color, you know, why that's our mission. It's a noble mission. So uh, sometimes, you know, I, and I'll just speak for myself from experience. I had to get to a place where as a white administrator, I was comfortable um, talking about issues of race. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can have, there's, there's a little, there's a little paralysis that you get sometimes where, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to say something offensive or say, or, or, or take a wrong step, you know? And someone said to me um, um, once it was, and, and I've never forgotten it. It was, uh, you know, you, you'd rather misstep than not step. Mm. Uh, so I yep. think it's about being frank and saying like, you know, we do a great job. I think my middle school, I put my middle school up against any middle school in the, in the country. I just would, but I'm biased, obviously, but we need more teachers of color. We just do. We have mm -hmm. students of color and some of them feel less connected than some of our white students because of the faculty. That's just the fact, that's a fact. Um, and I've spoken to enough students over the years. I have a great relationship with my students. I have the type of relationship where they can give me real critical feedback, open and honestly. And mm -hmm. so that's just, and that's not that's not unusual. That's, that's very typical for, for um, middle schools across the Commonwealth for sure and across the country, um, you know, depending on the region, I suppose, but you know, you hear it a lot. Um, all over um, all over the country and so i think it's about planting that seed early and then tapping into mpde 
as mm -hmm. a resource because they have started to see, they have always been sort of, we'll help you with this pool of candidates who are college graduates right. and they're ready to go. And, and in the nineties, they did a lot of work with, it was um, tomorrow's teachers today. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the program that they had in the nineties and then it went away a little bit. And so they're looking to cultivate that. So that is a, a, in its simplest form, like a club. Right. You just kind of add that as a club and, you know, to promote um, um, students of color, to stick with it, become educators of color, um, and then ultimately come back. That's like, the, the, that's the jackpot, really. Right. Stoking kids coming back, because then you get the double whammy. I mean, I will, I am always looking far and wide to find um, qualified, certified candidates of color. And, and I don't, I'm not shy about that. I don't, I make no bones about that as my as my mission in hiring. Um, and even with that commitment over, I don't know how, how many years, it's been a lot of years, yeah. maybe this is my ninth year or eighth year as principal at OMS. Um, you know, I still, I think this year I'll break double digits at my school, which for me is an amazing accomplishment, but I have more than a hundred staff. So, right. um, I mean, it's a big step, but it's also not really a reflection of the student body yet, which is where you want to get to. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's really important for people to hear um, sort of the the complexities of this issue that it isn't it's not as simple it's not a quick fix um, and that just the commitment and the um, the time and the energy that you're putting in like on behalf of the district to to really keep working on this issue because this is a this is a long term you know it's a complicated problem complicated yeah. solution right so yeah. um, so I think that's important because I think there are there are a lot of um, misperceptions about i mean people don't people don't have um the opportunity to to get to hear this part of the narrative um you know and, yeah. and what it's like to to really be trying to hire and to diversify the staff yeah yeah and even in my own um journey with this work i i really thought it was as easy as going to be mm -hmm. i mean i knew it would be easy and simple i had re i had sort of researched it but i really thought all right we'll join mpde and we'll kind of have that resource and then we'll kind of take it from there. And that has been amazing. I love MPDE. I, they were a member district and um, th th it's been amazingly helpful, but you know, it's kind of more than that. And I also want to say that even though I'm the district rep and I love being the district rep, um, the leadership team at Stoughton is that they, they um, I, Stoughton had more, we just did the um, Stoughton's administrative retreat. And a week before that MPDE had their virtual retreat so the virtual um, retreat was open to um, anyone who wanted to come from yep. the member districts. So it wasn't just the district rep or a couple of people, the monthly meetings, you know, you only bring like maybe one or two people. Mm -hmm. The retreat is kind of open to any um, um, anyone in the district who, who wants to go if you're a member district. So I opened it up to my entire leadership team. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, um, um, anyway, I just want to say that I, I, am happy to report that Stoughton had more, um, principals and district administrators attend the retreat than any other district. Oh, great. Um, and, and so the, the leadership team here, um, I think has the same, um, kind of vision in mind. I, I, you know, I'm the district rep, but I don't really feel like I'm, um, you know, the only person paddling that boat and, you know, Dr. Marcus, um, has, um, literally identified diversity, equity, and inclusion work as the as his priorities, a priority for the district. And he did that back when his entry findings were were published. I want to say that was either January or February. So it's kind of it's kind of a good place to be right now. We have a long way to go. Right. Um, but it's I think in Stoughton it's a it's a it's a great place to be. Um, so yeah. And and I I don't like to talk about new staff. Um, you know, a couple of them have signed um, contracts already, which is great. Another couple of them have interviews scheduled um, with Dr. Marcus. But you know, I went from um, a, about one percent of my um, staff um, being um, of color um, when I before I started my work with MPDE um, to seven percent, and I think next year I'll get to ten percent, which is still such a small percentage, but such a big deal um, mm -hmm. at OMS and really. Cultural competence work is very important and DEI work is crucial. Mm -hmm. You can't have a functioning school without it. Um, but I would argue 
that if you're not really trying to increase the diversity of your staff and your teachers, um, if you have a diverse student body, you know, you're only going to get so much out of those initiatives. I think, I think they have to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I think about too, you know, so for our folks at home who are, um, you know, people in the community and they're thinking about like, well, how can I support this initiative? I would say if you have young people in your life um, and, you know, they're interested in teaching, like connect them with, you know, have them talk to their teachers and, um, you know, other folks in the buildings. Maybe they have a teacher that they loved in, you know, maybe it was an elementary school teacher, a high school teacher, a middle school teacher, and, um, you know, and encourage them to ha start having conversations about what would it mean to, you know, consider, you know, being an educator, right? Maybe yeah. they haven't really thought about it. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So. And those numbers, you know, in Massachusetts, there are, you know, those numbers were getting a little bit better in certain, at, in certain colleges. There are um, candidates um, of, of color. It seems like that um, uh, the pool for MPDE um, for me has gotten a little bit bigger, a little more um, accessible for me. So, I, I feel like it's kind of going in a in a, a pretty good direction there, but I, I think thinking about this being a cable show, um, Steph, and, and and maybe just a casual um, viewer kind of tuning in, I would definitely echo that sentiment. If you have a young person um, of color in your life and they're on the fence about education, I would say a we really need teachers of color um, in schools. We really need them in order to make positive um, and effective school communities, we really do. Um, and I would also say that communities are fighting over these candidates. It's, it is competitive. So, you know, like math and science, if you're, if you're a math teacher, districts are gonna offer you bumps in salary that they're not gonna offer English teachers. We're a dime a dozen. I was an English teacher, so I feel comfortable saying that, you know? And, you know, if you're a candidate of color, their districts are gonna compete over you. Um, so, so keep that in mind. And the other thing that I would say is you don't have to be a teacher to be on my staff. So I have, I have one staff member of color. Who, she, she's a school security monitor, Miss um, T. Um, you know, I'm going to say she is a beloved figure in my school community, and she does not have a background in education. She's our school security monitor. She patrols the halls with the walkie-talkie, keeps an eye on the kid, does lunch duty, and she's a very valuable member of our school community. So, you know, if you're at home and you're an adult and you're like, you never, never really thought about being a pair of professional or maybe working in a, in the kitchen or as a substitute teacher or a school security monitor, you would be surprised at the impact that you can have on a school community in that role. It can sometimes be really profound. So that's awesome. the only other thing that I would say. So I think that is a great last thought. I'm getting, we're getting the notification from the studio and that we have we've like gone over our time and it's been um, such a good discussion. So I want to thank you, Matt, for um, coming on the show and um, sharing your thoughts with us. I think that was a great last thought to end on. Awesome. Well, thanks, Steph. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And um, thank you everybody at home. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Stay safe, guys. Mm -hmm.